Well, hello. Remember me? If you're new here and you've somehow stumbled over this, hello, my name's Kim. Um, this is my Beech Tree Handmade channel and it's where I share DIYs and hand embroidery and knitting and just crafty stuff. However, people who have been here from the start will know that the last time I showed up here was actually Vlogmas, which is December for those who don't know what Vlogmas is. And it is now June, so it's been a while. When I started this channel, it was supposed to be somewhere that I could share all this creative stuff so that I could focus on the more business stuff on my other channel. And then I tried again to try and merge the two together earlier this year and it's... I've had mixed results, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't break my channel, always good, but it was definitely obvious to me that people aren't there for the behind the scenes creative stuff which I'll get to in a second. They're there for the business chat and to be honest I think I was confusing myself too so I'm going to talk more on that there another time. There is however a silver cloud, no, a silver lining to that cloud. <laughs> I, it would make sense if I got my metaphors right and that is that it's given me the oomph I needed to get back on here. So here I am. So what have I been doing while I've been quiet? Well, apart from experimenting hard and fast with my other channel, I've been um, building a website. So I have my Etsy shop and a website now. It's very exciting. I have been getting back into making project bags such as these. This one's mine. And um, although you can't see the colours very well in this video, it was inspired by this here photograph which is beautiful. I mean, this, it doesn't do the sunset justice. It was amazing. That was the most beautiful sunset and I will remember it for as long as I live or as long as my memory holds out. Um, and it, as I say, inspired a project bag or a few. Um, I had them up as pre-orders in the shop for a little while. I had told myself that if it didn't sell, then I would keep one for myself and there were none to keep. So, I made myself one because that's the perk of the job. <laughs> the only change that I did make is that I embroider some of my favourite um, sayings on there and the ones in the shop had um, a year from now you'll be glad you started embroidered on them whereas this one has it's okay to rest because I tell you I need a gentle reminder occasionally. Anyway that is my, my finished make for me, very very happy. This is my work in progress my current work in progress. It's a bit hard to see with the hoop on it. Um, it this is just one of my old t-shirts and essentially I just decided that it, it wasn't yellow enough. It needed more. <laughs> if I just point this down just ever so slightly. Excuse me. There we go, you can see it a bit more clearly. So I've positioned the sunflowers on the shoulders and I probably won't be able to show you properly without covering up the mic. So let's just take that off a second. You can't see properly because obviously the hoop's still on it, but it's going to be positioned about there and that will there'll be another half there. And this was obviously the first one that I finished. It killed my thumb. I don't know if you can see properly if it will let me... No, it won't. Basically, I have a blister on my thumb which has now turned into a callus, which is pretty useful actually because it feels like I've got a living thimble on the tip of my thumb. It's brilliant. Nothing, nothing hurts this anymore. <laughs> so, the idea is to finish this sunflower and then I think one of them's going to have a little bee. Let's bring you back up, shall we? And I need to do it fairly quickly because, as I say, it's the start of June, we're into summer and I, I, I want th to wear this in summer, not autumn or winter. I don't know if you can see my, my granny square cardigan there. I finished that just in time to see the end of winter. So it hasn't had a lot of wear. But this year, when we go into autumn and winter, I'll be ready. But this one, I'd like to get finished fairly quickly. I just realised I haven't put my mic back on. Hopefully I sound better now. Anyway. Um, that's the plan, so that's what I'm going to be working on now. Um, 
I had made these patches just for this project and just for me, but <laughs> as is usually the case, once I do something like that and I think this actually is pretty good, I decided to add them to the, um, the shop. Hang on. And I'll show you. I would take the patches out of the pack, but it took me long enough to get them in there. They just about fit. And then you get some little bees in there as well. Um, so as I say, it wasn't supposed to be in the shop, but when I started stitching them up, I loved it so much. I was like, I need to make these patches. And the reason why patches are good, um, simply because this is Jersey fabric, so it's very stretchy. And essentially what this stuff is, is stabilizer. So it does keep it nice and still. It gives it a little bit more support as you're stitching. So otherwise, flipping hair, because otherwise you could end up stretching your, your t-shirt or whatever you're stitching on. You could stretch it all out of whack. Anyway, right, so that's that's the story behind that. That is what I'm currently working on. And until I've finished it, that is what I'll be sharing with you here. Life update time. What has happened in the six months since I was here last? Well, a fair amount. Um, Work-wise, most of you will know that um, I had a bit of a hissy fit with Etsy in that it was becoming a lot of hard work um, and I didn't feel that I was making enough for the effort that I was putting in. Um, I was very pleased with myself last year because I did manage to find a strategy that fit for me, um, bearing in mind that I run a, a handmade, a physical handmade business. So all of my items are sort of embroidery or um, project bags. They're, they're handmade physical items for the most part. And I was able to pivot and, and make sure that I was bringing in consistent sales into the shop, but it meant that things like this and my collections, my more creative and slower to make items ended up taking a back seat and I just felt like my creativity was pushed to one side, shall we say. Um, so I decided to create a website where I was hoping I would have more success in selling the slower, bigger ticket items. Um, and then Etsy could be used as a tool to bring in those consistent sales with, with other things like the stick and stitch patches, which are also in the website, by the by. What I found was that I preferred being on the website. There's something, it took a lot of work, so much work. And, and um, <sighs> all I can say is that there is a very good reason why people make building websites for other people their job. It's because th they are needed. And frankly, if I had the budget, I, <laughs> I would have got someone else to do it for me too, because it was a task. It's not an easy simple, I've had a falling out with Etsy, so I'm going to build a website type deal. Does that mean that it's not worth it? Oh, hell no. It's it's very, very worth it. And I'll do it over again. So I did that. I felt so proud of myself. Um, I even shared the process on the other channel and <laughs> fell over a little bit energy wise. I, I got quite, quite burnt out, I think. Not, not, properly burnt out but it, it definitely was a tiring exhausting experience yeah my energy was very low after I got that done but I was also very very happy and I felt like I'd managed to somehow bring my business back to something that I had imagined when I created it now this isn't going to be the sort of thing that I'm going to be talking about here a lot but just to bring you up to date um, on my other channel I do tend to talk more about business stuff. The stuff that goes into running a handmade business essentially. So I wanted to incorporate more videos about mailing lists and marketing and communi community building and that sort of thing. All of the other things that I do and focus on in building the business. Etsy is a very very valid part of my business but a very small one. So I pivoted the other channel as well. There was the collection as I um, that I launched the website with. That was a, a big deal as well. And then there was a lot of life stuff. I didn't really talk about on the other channel because it had nothing to do with work. Um, just things like having to remortgage the house. When we bought the house, we 
signed up for a five-year deal, which meant that we were paying the same amount of interest every month. And it was lovely. <laughs> but after five years, you have to find, you have to either renew that same mortgage deal or find another one. And it gives you a chance to sort of look around for the best rates, etc. Well, that's what we were doing. Only there's the cost of living crisis economic thing going around and it was a bit hairy for a little while. And just trying to find one that wasn't going to cripple us financially was funsies. And when I say funsies, I mean it was hell. <laughs> it, was, it was not fun. There was some other life stuff going on that I can't talk about as well, just because it's private. And it, it, it was just a lot going on in the background at the same time as trying to run my business and talk about that. So yeah, the first half of this year has been a lot, but I've also achieved a lot. And I've had a lot of time to think about this business of mine and how I want it to look. And um, I think, I think I've done a really good job of getting it back to where I want it to be. And the last part of that was, I, th I think I touched on it, was to try and um, pivot the other channel so that it wasn't just talking about Etsy, but also I tried again to bring in the more creative side to the channel, a bit more behind the scenes with, with my own business. And there are a solid group of people there that really enjoy that content. Unfortunately, the vast majority of my followership there is there for the, the business stuff, the Etsy stuff, the Shopify stuff, not the other stuff, <laughs> not the creative stitchy stuff. So it's like, ah, which is so silly because that's the exact purpose of this channel. So, okay, fine, I get it. <laughs> there will now be the business content on my other channel and then the idea is that I'm going to continue with DIYs and the studio vlogs and maybe even a crafty podcast on this here blog channel. Words. I like longer videos. I like chattier videos. Can you tell? <laughs> I like having the time to show people what I'm working on and, and talk about crafting and, and maybe even get like feedback because this thing I I was having issues with the, the 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 two cuffs around the wrists one was fine and I was doing the exact same thing on the other cuff and for some reason it was just so tight and I just couldn't understand why and I was um getting uh, some feedback and advice from people in the comments and um I did try one uh suggestion I forget who suggested it it was just to go up a, a hook size worked perfectly worked perfectly it's it's I still don't understand why there was such an inconsistency between the two cuffs because I used the same hook the same um yarn everything but it may have been my tension I don't know I'm, I you can see that it's made with um black yarn as well so it could be something to do with the stitches I was perhaps either doing a stitch differently because I was doing it on a different side or perhaps I was just I, I don't know I don't know but anyway the feedback that I got from other people helped me and that's another reason why I want to come here because I just I love the idea of the back and forth between um, people talking about um, the crafts that they like and stuff and I think the crafts that I'm going to be focusing on here most are obviously going to be hand embroidery um, but also crochet and knitting because <laughs> one of the things that I really, really, really want to try is knitting a pair of socks, which I'm not going to lie, I was really excited about and now I'm a bit nervous because almost everyone <laughs> I speak to, when I say, oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to knit a pair of socks, kind of does this face. <sighs> oh, okay. I did that once. <laughs> like I did that once back in the day. Never again. Why? Can some... If you knit, can people please tell me, what is it about socks that just make knitters, even like seasoned knitters do that? Why? What am I getting into? Bearing in mind that I'm not a knitter. I'm barely a crocheter. Granny squares are kind of my thing. That's it. 
and that was the biggest project I've ever done crochet wise. So knitting, I can knit, but I've never knit anything more stressful than a scarf because it's just straight. I did do one with a cable um, detail down it once, which I remember thinking was easier than I had imagined and I really liked it. It was for my daughter years ago when she was little. She loved it. Um, but yeah, nothing finished and certainly nothing for me and I just like the idea of knitting up my own socks because I do like, I do like a cosy pair of socks. And also in the winter, um, when the light gets poorer, it's really difficult to stitch in the evenings and sometimes I just want to sit down, cosy up by the fire with a kind of a knitty type, a knitty or a crochet type thing. So in the next few months, that's, that's going to be my next thing, I think. So yeah, I do tend to do a lot more hand stitching during the summer. I do it during the winter as well, but it's just... It's a daytime thing. <laughs> it's not an evening thing, otherwise I'm like trying to see what I'm doing and I usually always leave gaps. If I'm trying to hand embroider in the in the dark <laughs> or in the win winter light, even with lights on, even with a lamp on right over my head, there'll be gaps. So yeah, I natural daylight. But yes, for the knitters amongst you, please tell me why. Why? What, what have what have socks done to the knitting community? <laughs> what have I let myself in for? And do you have any tips? Because I, I suspect I'm going to need them. I'm going to be doing um, them on... I don't know what they're called. This bodes well. Um, the knitting needles that are joined. You know, the little bendy ones? <laughs> the, the, they're connected. Is it on the round? Is that what it's called? I don't know. But I've seen um, uh, people knit with four knitting needles, like just like crisscrossing, and I just, no, no. That is some kind of madness. How anyone knows what they're doing and can not drop the entire thing into a tangled mess. I, hats off to you, honestly, because I just, I just couldn't. Even the thought of it makes my shoulders go, Bleh. So yes, I'll be using the, the, the needles that I can't think of the name of. They're not bendy ones, Kim. What are they called? I will, I will, by the time this goes up, I will know what they're called, but um, I, I will write it here and I will consider myself educated. Anyway, my phone has just flashed up with a little message saying that it's about to run out of battery. So um, there you go. I've managed to do a tiny little bit because embroidery is slow. And I will, I will wrap this up, but just to let you all know, I am back. Little brief update as to what I've been working on and, um, and hopefully you'll stick around for the, for the stitchy nonsense that's to follow. And if you have any friends who are into hand embroidery, knitting podcasts or crochet, then um, let them know about me. As long as they like waffle, because if they like coherent brevity, with their knitting. <laughs> this may not be the place for them. <laughs> All right, I will I will talk to you soon.